Alright guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Stream. This is going to be a real short video, one of the shortest videos I've ever done. No, maybe not, maybe, maybe not. But when I say it's going to be the shortest video I've ever done, it turns into a three hour affair, doesn't it? So, I was going to do a species spotlight, but I thought, let's do a species floodlight. Floodlight shows lots of area. Let's, let's just show a lot of my African cichlids. I'm not going to say show all of them. Um, and uh, you guys will be able to have a laugh at my mispronunciation and my wrong naming. Alright, where do we start? Where do we start? Let's start with um, one that's been really hard for me to keep. Um, Nibachromus linny. So there's actually only four left in there. What The story behind them, I bought 10 and I lost the 10 within two weeks. And then I bought 10 more. The second lot of 10 I've had for several months now. Um, maybe even like nine months or so. And they've been gl gl growing really slow. Um, but And only four are still alive. But the four seem to be surviving pretty well. Hopefully I can get at least one mouthful and then and then start again but um, if you're thinking about Nebochromus linny um, uh, I would definitely suggest trying something like Nebochromus polystigma first uh, the polystigma are just super aggressive but it's a bit of a trade-off much easier to raise than the linny but they are super aggressive and then let's go across to one of my favorites and it it, it's sad its location for being my favorite. You've got a hop, skip and jump up on this pond. Yes, dirty pond. Um, hot subject of the channel. If you're new to the channel, um, this is the collection point of the whole tank for some reason. I've got a stingray to go in there. It's just a little bit too small. Once the stingray goes in there, um, the bottom of this will be clear because they stir the bottom up. But at the moment, there's no stingray in there to stir that up. But anyway, <coughs> Masobo cichlid. Um, are, are they a met Metricola Masobo? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, these guys haven't bred for a while. Um, the smaller ones are actually their fry, and they stopped breeding, so I just threw in all the fry that I had left of them and stopped selling them. Um, then in the fry tanks here, we've got. Uh, ridiculous amounts of Nibachromus polystigma. I've got another 50 down there. Um, I should really start advertising them. I think they'll sell real quick. Um, Alright, let's get away from the fry. We're here to look at adults. Oh, there's one of my, one of my Oscars. But this is an African video, guys. Oh, how dirty is the glass? Uh -uh. I need to have an overhaul of this pond. Um, I don't know when it's going to be. Oh, I was thinking about Christmas, but I've got to tile my house at Christmas. Um, all right, all right. What do we look at next? What do we look at next? Um, dragon bloods. You've all seen dragon blood before. I lost my albino male, so I'm trying to pump these ones here and trying to get a nice albino male out of them to put back in the colony because I just want an albino male. There's a normal male in there at the moment. Let's close this door so we don't lose all our heat. Um, Mason Reefs, probably my, one of my favourites. I think I like I like Mason Reef more than Masobo. So saying Masobo was my favourite was a lie. Look at him, he's gorgeous. He's halfway through doing a poo, but that's all right. And um, believe it or not, that's not really him showing off. He goes, he goes like really jet black. We'll see if I step back a little bit. We'll zoom the camera in. He might go a bit darker with us just chilling here. And he goes dark, oh yeah, you can see he's already going darker, just me stepping back. And he goes darker within like 10 seconds. He's cool. Um, while we're on that subject, you guys all know this one. There's a trophy up my Panga Reds. Um, I did lose a male the other day, but I've still got two big males in there, and uh, I'm low-key thinking about 
selling at least the the brighter one because you can see the darker one is way too stressed out and actually or even selling both and then I've got I've got a couple of young younger ones over here there's three young males there I could put in there um oh let's I got so in here Africans um Joan Johansi I've got three males and one female if you're a subscriber contact me and you can have the four for free obviously Perth patrons only um, I'll honestly give them to someone for free and uh, if someone wants to try breed them even better I'll buy a fry back off them but I just I, I don't have the room and at, when you've got this many cichlids it's kind of like you have to choose what as soon as something doesn't breed for a little while I have to give that up do you know what I mean because um, it's taking up space there's a few fish that aren't breeding around here but we won't talk about them um my electric yellows this is this male i'm super proud of you guys know that um so these fry are actually from that male i'm just hoping as they get bigger they get nice and dark um if you look at the size the smaller ones as they're getting bigger they're definitely getting darker but whether they'll actually get as dark as him, I'm not sure yet, I'm not sure. Fingers crossed, he's gorgeous. They're all the same bloodline, like, um, that it, it, it's just I've selected the, the two males. I uh, sold off all my other males and, and just kept the two darkest ones. Um, then you got the marbles. I really need to strip this girl, the girls in their holding because that's a new boy, so that I, that's a new bloodline, um, crossed with, or not crossed, but like bred with my girls. So um, I should really get the fry from these two girls and grow out myself a new colony and see what they turn out like. Um, but sometimes things like marbles, it's hard to grow out my own new colony because I end up selling them all and then I keep none for myself. Um, What, what have we got here? We've got um, Dimachromus um, strigatus. This guy's gorgeous. They used to be real chilled, but lately the male's been attacking some of the girls, which hasn't been good. So they're another one that I'm keeping some fry from to grow out some more, because I'm worried that this colony is a bit of a ticking time bomb. Um, Fenno something something, star sapphires, you guys all know them, you all love them. Um, these guys haven't bred for a while, I'm not really sure what to do about it. Um, kind of thinking about taking out the spare boy and only having one boy with the girls, but I don't really think that's going to change the situation much. Um, they're just one of those fish, they'll breed for a couple of months and then they stop and then they breed again. Um, I could. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I might have to think about trying sooner rather than later because I get asked for star sapphires at least once a week and I just don't have the fry to support the demand. And then down here we've got, I can't remember the name of this one guys, it's the Malawi Hawk. Um, an interesting thing, that, that dark yellow one there is actually a girl but it's from a different source to the rest. Um, so my plan is to actually select the fry from that girl with, girl with the gold and see if I can get a, a, a nice gold brew of females going. This one here is a male. Um, he's only just starting to colour up. So if he, he takes over dominance, um, hopefully he gets as big if not bigger than her and it might be game on. We should get some fry. I definitely don't think these guys are far away from breeding. Um, in case you haven't noticed, I love my big haps. I'm actually not a huge fan of Mabuna, but I am. Um, I always said I wasn't, but now look how many I own. And uh, yeah, look, like you just can't tell me that that isn't a good looking fish. But um, <clears throat> anyway, let's look at a West African cichlid while we're here if you look 
Oh, wait, wait, we're going to turn this down in there. We've got Tenardi. I can't even remember what they're called. Something Tenardi. Um, or Tenardis. Tenardi, Tenardis. They're like the cousins of the blockhead cichlids. So there's two males there, male and male. I don't know where the girl is. There is one girl in there, but hopefully they haven't. Oh, she's up. I can see her. If that rainbow moves out of the way. She's up under the wood there. What if we turn the light on? Boom. There she is. That's very cool. She's still alive. Um, I kind of was thinking about taking the big boy out and leaving the little boy with her, but um, hope, I'm kind of hoping that the two boys fight instead of them killing the girl. And then if it, the rainbows in there are just some mystery rainbows. Um, they kind of just went in there as a dither fish. They got given to me and they didn't have a proper name when I got them, so uh, I'm not going to guess their breed. A few people have told me what they think they are, but I, I, I would just never really breed them or sell them just because um, I can't be 100%. Um, Demosoni. I always kind of think about selling these guys and then I never actually do it. If you're in Perth and you want to buy them, throw me an offer, but I don't know. There's a lot of history with these Demosoni. This is like fourth generation that I've bred. I've never sold any and they're just a ticking time bomb. They end up killing each other and then I throw the... Oh, there's a girl holding there. So that mouthful there will actually be like fifth generation that I got from a pair that um, I got off a friend named Mike. Um, Max Cichlid on Facebook. You might have seen him on Perth Cichlid Society. He gave me a pair for free. I bred the pair. Then I had a colony of like 10. Then they killed each other. Then I had a colony of like 20. They killed each other. And now I've got like 30 plus in there. And I'm hoping that the bigger group, yeah, I'm keen. I need to I need to do an African stripping video guys. Maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. There's a there's a Mason Reef girl holding uh, up in that corner there, that one there is holding. And I kinda wanna strip her because look what happens if you look at her, her fins are all nipped and that. If I leave them holding, the boy actually smashes them. So like it's I'm better off stripping them earlier. Uh, there's Nakali cobalt blue and cobe blue or lunacara down there and then the bacochromis you guys know my bacochromis um so if it, <clears throat> so these guys have i'm not sure if they've been fighting or there's just something not right with them but if you look they've actually got um red on a couple of their noses but i don't know if that's the same issue that i've got over here um but these two tanks have never come in contact with each other and neither have the fish. And the fact that there's only one or two with the red mark, I kind of think it's them lip locking. Um, but who knows? I'm just going to keep an eye on it. With the Buccochromis, if, if it does come to any worry like that, um, I'd be happy to just give them a methylene blue bath. Um, Whereas the Linny are sensitive fish, so I never really wanted to chuck them in methylene blue. Anyway guys, I'll keep an eye on the bucket chromis and if it if I do decide that it is an illness and I need to medicate, uh, I'll definitely take you guys along for the ride with me. Um, this channel's pretty transparent like that. If fish get sick, I'll tell you that the fish is sick and um, I don't want to sugarcoat a fish room and everybody think that everything's all good all the time. Um, it's definitely far from that but I will admit the automatic water change system has reduced my illness by at least I would say 80% maybe even more um, I just don't like I hardly get sick fish and um, I need to fix the door too guys um, and the joys of I mean I've got water everywhere the, the, the only negative of hardly getting sick fish is a lot of you guys 
inbox me and stuff and ask me for advice on how to treat your sick fish. And uh, um, I don't have the answers because I don't, my touch wood, really touch wood. Um, I don't get, my fish don't get very sick. But um, that's a great problem to have, I think. Um, definitely only a problem as a YouTuber. Uh, but if I can convince you guys to go automatic water changes, even if it's just one of you, I think uh, that's my good deed for the day because it's honestly one of, it's like the best thing in my life as far as the hobby goes. Um, it, I was at breaking point before I had the automatic water changes. I was actually honestly thinking about giving up fish and not breeding at all and it was the automatic water change system that actually changed that for me. So if you've ever thought about it, think about it some more, strongly consider it and uh, especially if you're not renting, if you're in your own house, 100% do it. But on that note guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more, hit that little red button and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.